All right, hello everyone, and thank you for for joining us today. We are recording in progress. Robbie and I are in Dallas, Texas, and we appreciate your time and we look forward to your questions and we uh, are excited to uh, hopefully push you further along on your AI journey, whatever that may be. Just to um, begin here, I wanted to let everyone know we are going to use AI in the form of Bogler Assist to capture this presentation, analyze it, and, and give us insights as to how we can do this better in real time. It does it all in real time, lets you know, gives you a recap. We'll get into that in a little bit. But we're going to show all sorts of not just future talk, but uh, real application for today. Some of you know us from years and decades past in the event and hospitality space. Uh, you know us as production company or an entertainment company, but we've always had this very serious nerd side of the house uh, where we did a lot of really cutting edge technology. So we put radio and television on the web back in the late 90s. We actually owned the patent for social engagement around events, so how to capture and monitor and visualize and rank and do all that kind of stuff. A lot of things throughout the years, so I just wanted to share with everyone, this is a whole separate division we call Think Labs that's focused on two things and two things only, and that's elevating experiences and empowering people. Okay, so we do that with fun innovation. We are not going to do a future sci-fi presentation here like every other keynote talking about flying cars and lasers and radar, radar uh, and uh, lasers and, and flying cars. Instead, we're going to be talking about things that you can go use today. We're going to give you the tools, the knowledge, and confidence to do so. We're going to talk about what is AI in general, give you some fun demonstrations, why and how it can be relevant to you, and then how to get you get going, right? So just a, a show of virtual hands, I guess. How many people are currently, I'm trying to turn off. How many people are currently using generative AI, have played with it a little bit? Many? Yeah, a lot of people, okay. And, and are you using it uh, in work currently? Kinda, a little bit, okay, good. So AI is all around us. It's something we take for granted. It's not new. It's been here for quite some time. You probably are using Google Maps or, or think about when you go to watch a movie on Netflix. How, how did they know what I wanted to watch? Or if you go on Amazon, how did it know what I needed, right? Or look at your Siri or, or Alexa. Or when you're texting, how does it know the next word I wanted? It's never right, but how did it know that word? So there's AI all around us. And today is not necessarily about tech, it's about changing the mindset because it truly is about change, right? And humans don't like change as much. So we need to think about how we're going to approach this change with this AI and how that will affect our business and what we can do with that. We just don't preach this, we practice this. So to give you a quick understanding and, and see how AI can change different fields, our production side of the house during the pandemic, we looked and said, you know, what are we gonna do when we come out different? How, what can we do? Because people, I don't think anyone on here has a client that says, just, can we just do what we always do? I don't need any creativity. I don't need to do anything different. Just, let's just do the same thing. We all, no one ever says that, right? I want it bigger, better, greater, elevated. What can we do? So we looked at that inside of our photography. We now will take our images that will cover it, say a welcome reception where you might have a thousand images and it might take you two to three hours to edit those. They're now edited in seven minutes. Okay. They're instantly put on a website, uh, which looks like any other website. The difference is it's got AI facial recognition. So in two seconds, it looks at your face and then will instantly go and find every shot of you just like that. It's amazing for us. It's amazing for the planner and organizer and it elevates the experience 
for the guests. So there is a practical application of AI changing the game. No one lost their job, everyone got more jobs, and we elevate the experience as we go, okay? Change happens, and it's how you deal with it that's important. In 1900, 40% of the U.S. population were farmers, 40%. There were 25 million horses that were focused on pulling plows and working on farms. Well, with the invention of the tractor in just a little bit of time, we are now currently at 1% of the population are farmers. It's less than 1%. So what happened to those farmers? Yes, they lost their job of having to follow one horse around a field, right? But what they did is they started doing other things. They became business people. They're now selling much more crops. 20% of all the crops in the 1900s went to just feeding the horses. So now they have all this extra crop, extra productivity. They're now able to sell and do more. And then there's whole new industries and tasks now made. You need someone to build tractors and make tractors and on and on and on. So we are going to see a big change, but it's not uh, everyone's out of work. It's now you do different things now with your new uh, found innovation. Think about the change we had to do in three days on Zoom. Before that was a nerd toy, right? Hey, let me, let me go back and forth and play. And in three days, everyone had to figure out how to do that because that's the new way we're gonna be doing business. I would have loved to have had stock in that when that, uh, when that happened because it went up 900%. So we have to do little changes Otherwise, nothing will change, right? They say that AI is happening so fast that within two years, you'll have two sorts of companies, those that have embraced and are using AI and those that wonder what happened to them. So let's do a quick little AI history. I'm not going to hurt anyone's head here. We'll just have fun with this. But AI basically started with machine learning and language, and that happened way back in the 1940s and into the 50s. But it has been advancing, obviously, so, so fast. And it was noticed by the engineers at the time that every two years, it doubles. Think about that, your iPhone, right? The iPhone 2 compared to the 3 compared to whatever. It doubles, it's faster, it's generally lower cost, and so they called it the Moore's Law, and it's really held true to technology. So today, this watch I'm wearing is equivalent to 100 of all of the NASA buildings and all of their computers that put a rocket on the moon. Think about that. So that's how fast things happen just with technology, and we see that, right? This is a quick thing, but with, with innovation and change, we normally have a little bit of time. If you look at the adoption of the internet, someone said, if you look at the adoption of the internet, you know, you started with a dial-up modem. We didn't even have a browser for several years. Then you didn't even have email till six years later, right? And it wasn't until 17 years later that the trusty iPhone was developed, but now you had internet in your hand anywhere you want it anytime, 17 years. So in that time, we all had time to understand what this is, what the internet is, and what we can do with it, 17 years. The problem that's happened with AI is that it was just dropped on us and everyone said, go. And by the way, it's a bullet train. So where we normally would see advancements every two years or whatever it may be, we're seeing this every couple of weeks. Here is a great example. I hope, I hope this is big enough that you can see it. We were sitting with a big restaurateur here in Dallas. They're a churrascaria. I think they're global. Um, but we were demonstrating in April of 2023 how you could put text into AI and say, create an image. Right, so this is magic in April, and all of a sudden, this image is created. So everyone in the boardroom's like, "Whoa, how did that happen? Wow, that's that's amazing!" And at the time, it was right, but that that faded really quick. 
Well, using the same prompt just four or five months later, here's that same image, the same exact prompt. So it, in that short amount of time, it had evolved three times. So we're now seeing AI advancing 100x in a year, 100x. So what does that mean? That means Hear me now. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Okay. Where did I lose everyone? Okay, good. So that video. Can you hear me now? Sorry, everyone. So that is a synthetic or AI news channel. The, the information is found on the web by AI. The scripts are written with AI and they're presented uh, by AI people. So those were not real people. Everyone hear me now? Sorry about that technical difficulty there. So that is what's happening. They call it synthetic media. Go to the next slide here. Here's the problem with that. As of September of 2023, the web is now beginning to be flooded with what they call synthetic media. So was it real or was it created or is it authentic or what is it? So that has tremendous ramifications because in the US anyway, 73% of people believe what they see online, more than they'll believe from someone telling them, their best friend. So if I saw it online, if I saw it in my Facebook stream, it must be real. So that's a real problem as the Americans are now getting to go into the uh, political campaigning here, what's real and what's not. And that happened last week with phone calls from the president to all kinds of different people and it was not the president. Okay, uh, to give you another example of what they call synthetic media looks like. Hey there, I'm Sam Stanton, founder of redbutton.ai. Today, we live in an era where the pace of change is not just rapid, it's exponential. The things we once took for granted, the people and experiences we never thought to question now require a second glance. You might be thinking you're hearing from the real Sam, but here's a twist. I am a synthetic version of him. I'm Sam AI. Ni hao, ni yang. Posso parlare in qualsiasi lingua. Aap kya sunna chahenge? Khnyum kaks voi ne hada mong me chirkrum hui smurpan. Danu, nakavi. That's me in Chinese, Italian, Urdu, Cambodian Khmer, and Chalkatongo Mixtec. Think about the implications. What is real anymore? How should our perception of reality change? The fact is, the future is here, and it's time to adapt, innovate, and rethink what we know. Welcome to your new world. So what do we think? Could you guys tell that wasn't me? Okay. So... That's crazy. Just to give you some context there, I recorded 30 seconds of me with my phone. Now, this could be you took 30 seconds of someone's video that you found somewhere, all right? And the AI learned me, it learned my voice, it learned my mannerisms, 
And unless you're my mom or see me every day, that was me as far as people are concerned. And all I did was put in a script that I actually wrote in AI to demonstrate that and hit go. And it did all the language and dialect. So I don't know if the Italians saw that and if that was anywhere close to the right accent, but it's really crazy. That, that evolved and happened a week and a half ago. Okay, so that's how fast things are going. This is fascinating and so important for us in the corporate events world. And that is, look at this slide, they call this Martex Law. So if you look at that green line, that is corporate, right? They're looking for a 10 to 15% return each and every year. If we're doing that, that's high five for everyone, way to go, everyone gets a bonus, right? Well, that yellow line that's going up, that's the technology curve. So, you know, it's doubling and it's going up here and it's doing that. So we've always had a challenge to try and, and, and push that green line up a little bit. But now after what I've just shared with you, if you look at AI, that's not even a curve, it's just a rocket ship going straight up. So how can we move that green line? Just, we gotta move it up a little bit because if not, you're gonna have people that are, that are moving in in the middle there that are like, hey, this is fun, this is neat, here's a new way of doing it. If I use AI, I can do this and this and this and they will blow away all of the green line people. No problem, because you're gonna learn how to do that today. So we're gonna jump in now into what they call generative AI. So in November of 2022, generative AI was dumped in our laps. It didn't come with a manual. It didn't come with an understanding. It wasn't supposed to go to everybody. It did, and people have started to play. It isn't specific to anybody, any industry, any task. It truly is available and can make impact on all of them, okay? And for the first time, machines aren't just given an instruction to go do, go sort this formula out and go do all this. Their machines are now using natural language processing, which means the code that you use is your voice. You tell it what you want and it responds back to you accordingly. So that's what's called generative AI. We've all heard of ChatGBT. That is what ChatGBT is, okay? We like to refer to this though as collaborative AI because it's just a machine. It's just going to do what you direct it to do. It's not gonna go jump in your car and drive off and take over your life or do any of that stuff. It's waiting for direction, right? It is like, and, and then we say this again and again, it's like having an over eager intern sitting next to you all the time that you can constantly beat on with tasks and redo it. The thing is, is that this intern is really, really smart. And why is that intern smart? Because in the summer of 2021, all of the web was grabbed, all of it. And it was all put in to a knowledge base, as well as 50 million books. Okay, so all the great authors were all put into this knowledge base. Now, a knowledge base is different than a database. So it's not, let me go look up what you're looking for, and I go here and I find this information, and here's your information. No, it's knowledge. It's rapid fire response. It's something like that you learned as a kid when someone asks you a question, you have an immediate answer for it because you didn't have to think about it. So we'll have fun with this real quick. To give you an example of what that rapid uh, response and knowledge is, I've put a very expensive piece of yellow silk on the screen now, and I need everyone, and you have to do this very demonstrative because I can't hear you. We're gonna say silk really loud five times. Here we go, silk. Silk, 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 silk. What do cows drink? Milk, right? That's what an entire audience would scream, milk. But the true answer obviously is cows drink water, okay? And that is an example of fast thinking. That is how we respond and do things all the time. An email comes in quickly, give them a response. What's the answer to this? Here's my answer. Very seldom do we slow down and do that critical thinking or that slow thinking. Fun science all behind this, love to share that with you sometime through Thinker Society. 
That's a fun engagement enrichment piece that we do, but we pulled it from there to make this demonstration. That is what generative AI is doing. It's instantly giving you an answer. Now with that, that answer might not be correct. Okay, they call that hallucination because it's the happy intern that says, oh, I gotta give them an answer, here's an answer. It's not right, but here's my answer, right? So you have to look at that and this is where your expertise, your knowledge, everything that you have done to get to where you're at is so valuable because you can look at it and say, that's not right or this is right. Let me give you a quick example of how generative AI works and works everywhere. This is a fun thing. We were on a shoot actually in LA and this guy was on the set and we just started talking and he asked what I do. And I said, I don't, I don't all kinds of stuff. What do you do? And he said, well, I'm an executive chef for Olukai. And I think a lot of us in, in the industry know who that is, but Olukai is the really high end, cool flip flops and shoes. The guy from Nike left and went to Hawaii and makes all these things. They're really cool, very popular, pretty expensive, big name brand in the US. Well, this guy is the executive chef at headquarters and he cooks for 45 senior execs. I was like, wow, that must be a mess. You're in LA for all these healthy sort of people. You must have jillions of crazy diets you have to take care of. And he's like, oh, you wouldn't understand. I was like, well, tell me, what's the latest diet that you're having to figure out? And he said, it's carb cycling. He goes, I don't, I don't even know where to start. I said, hold on one second. Tell me about carb cycling. So instantly, well, here's everything you need to know about carb cycling right here. So he looks at me like, what are you doing? Are you talking to Google or what, what's going on, right? I said, hold on, we're, we're not done yet. Um, I need to create recipe, or not recipes, but menu items for a month for 45 executives for breakfast and lunch following the carb cycling diet, go. There's everything. So now he's starting to lose color in his face and looking at me, right? And I, and I said, hold on, hold on. Create the recipe for each of those menu items. Go. And there it is, right? And then finally, uh, can you go ahead and create a shopping list for the first week of all those meals so I can have that ready? There it is. So what just happened? Did I take his job? No. What I did is I took care of the worst part of his job. He was not hired because he makes a good grocery list because he can research crazy diets. He is hired because he can make unbelievable connections with his patrons, with his executives. He understands them. He can converse with them. And he's a damn good chef, but he doesn't need to go through all the mess of what I should do and this and this. Just tell me what to cook. I'll cook it, right? So, I mean, he goes, man, that saves me hours, if not days, of spending weekends trying to figure all this mess out. It's right there. So that is fascinating use of generative AI or collaborative AI. And now you're saying, great, but what does that have to do with me? So let's, let's, let's look at this a little bit for you all. So I went to Bogler. And I plugged in, I need to plan an itinerary and recommendations for one of my VIP couples visiting Athens. What should they do? Where should they go? What should they see? They've got one day, they're staying at this hotel. I've got some ideas, but go ahead and help me out. Boom. Instantly, it creates an hour by hour, stop by stop. Okay? Now, the thing here is that what you need to understand and learn when you're starting to use Bogler or whatever GPT you want to use is that this is not a Google search. This is not put your information in and get your result and we're done. Thank you. See you later. This is the beginning of a conversation. So you look at your response and go, hmm, yeah, I don't know about that. I would. I, I want it broken down by the 30 minutes. Or if you look, I, don't, I think you can barely see it on this slide. On the bottom of Bogler, it gives follow-up questions. Tell me a good lunch place that's nearby. 
or whatever it may be. So you're going to dive further, further, further in in a conversation to get much better answers. Whenever you get a response back from Bogler or a GPT, it's your first draft, right? No, it's not right. It's about 95% right. And it took it off your task list of must do and just put it right there in front. The hardest thing we all do is start it, right? So now you've got that started. So here's another fun one. You're an experienced corporate planner known for creating unique events. This is interesting when you prompt. You want to tell your AI who they are. Well, you're an experienced planner, or you're an amazing marketer, or you're an amazing organizer or scheduler. So you do that so that you can help the AI focus as to what they should really do, right? I need you to create a three-day outline for a conference around AI in the financial industry and I need keynote, I need themes, I need descriptions, I need learning outcomes. We need all this stuff, right? And I need, um, I need to do it in the voice of my client. Think about that. Who does not love to read how they write? So AI will go out and look at everything that's ever been written by your client and know, learn their style, their tone, their voice, and then write your information in that. So when your client reads it, they go, man, this is really dead on. This sounds exactly like what we need. Of course it does. You basically wrote it, right? So there's your response. This goes on and on and on. Day one, breakout, on and on and on, learning outcomes, do all this stuff. Now remember, we've, this is all done by our smart intern, right? And you're gonna feel a little guilty because what you need to do is beat on that intern a little bit and say, yeah, that was good, but you know what? Can you give me 10 more versions of that title? Because that one was not great. And it will, just like that. So a fantastic, amazing ideation tool. Give me 10 more ideas around this. 10 different titles, okay? So this is fun. I, I use AI a lot with this. You'll, and you'll see here in a minute in the stat is that so much of our time as working professionals as emails and responding to people and communicating back and forth. And I'm, you guys have all been in my shoes on this one. So I had a client call up they, they said, I need the world, I need all this great, amazing entertainment, budgets, no object, blah, 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 blah. And we spent forever, the team put all this stuff together and then we presented it and the client came back and said, are you crazy? We've got $500 for this whole thing and that includes airfare to Rome. So it's like, ah. Oh. So what I really wanted to say, I wrote, but then I had, I gave it to AI, I gave it to Bogler and said, can you make this more business-like, more empathetic, so that I don't offend this person? And instantly, it wrote it. So what you're gonna see here in a second, I don't know if you see it right now, you don't see it right now. In a second, with Bogler, you can't do this with others, you're gonna be able to go in there and say, first of all, what language do I wanna do it in? I can do 109 languages, okay? then what is the tone or what is the format? Well, I'm creating an email or it's a summary or it's a report or it's an analysis or it's a speech or it's a blog post or it's a social media. You tell it what you want and then you tell it the tone. Well, this is more like it's empathetic or hey, it's just friends we're talking or I'm sending this to the city so it needs to be very exact and legal-ish and then you can choose the voice. I really love how Apple speaks. Or I want to speak in the voice of the DMC network. You all each have your own voices. That should be included across the board with all of your team. Imagine having that power. Every piece of correspondence going out is in your same style, tone, and voice across the board. Fantastic. So that's what we're gonna see. Okay.
Great question. So, so here's the thing to answer that question in all of all of this AI as we move forward. You can look at something today, and this is what we see a lot of corporations doing and quite honestly failing. We need to put our AI board together. We're gonna look at this new technology that does 4K video, like Rick said, right? And so we're gonna look at it, but you know what's kind of crappy. So I don't know, but we'll we'll talk about that and we're gonna do 20 different zooms and talk about how we're gonna use that, right? And then we come back and we've got our answer two months later. Well, in two months, that technology and that level and quality has just exponentially jumped. So like Rick, that video of me was stupid. That was, I mean, that's crazy. That was 4K video of someone who doesn't even exist, right? And, and a week prior, <clears throat> it was all garbage 720. So yes, that stuff's advancing. And I would tell you, go check out Dolly, D-A-H-L-E-E. -E. Um, that is one of the better um, image generators. And yes, they're putting it out at 4K. I had another slide I didn't share where I did a combination thing and it was, uh, you know, put somebody standing in the middle of the desert and it was kind of cool because it made it for the first time. But now what it's able to do, Dolly is, it's photo quality. It could be the front of National Geographic magazine. So look at what's out there, constantly looking and, and never give up on any of them because they all keep coming around and around with bigger, better advancements. So I hope that answered that question. Any others or should I jump back in? Yes. Yeah, very high level I will be because we just have that hour, but I'm going to be sharing the Boggler tool and giving you guys the Boggler tool and showing you how to use that as well. Okay, so... Uh, what generative AI or collaborative AI is all about is smashing those time killer tasks. No one is in their position right now because they write good emails or take good notes in a meeting. Is anyone? No. But that's all part of our job. So if we can use generative AI to start capturing and doing some of that repetitive, data-driven, time-consuming, and generative stuff that we do each and every day, we can gain back that time so we can focus on the reason we're hired, the things that we're good at. So a quick study done by MIT as of just a couple weeks ago, knowledge professionals, people who are using their brains every day during work, the majority of their time is spent first with email, then with meetings, and that's getting ready for the meeting, capturing the meeting, um, content generation. And yes, we've been talking about text and, and, and doing some of that. There's all kinds of video as well as visuals that you can do with that. Marketing and reporting. Create a social media campaign for this upcoming event. I need to do this on LinkedIn and TikTok. Tell me the visuals I should use and provide the copy I should accompany with it. And also tell me the time in which I should post it. It'll tell you all of that. Okay. And why is it doing that? Or how does it know? Because it's looking at all the millions and millions of campaigns that have been done prior and telling you exactly what was the most successful way and using that. Okay. Research and learning. How many people read all 67 pages of the IRF report? I did in the first 30 seconds at 9 a.m. on IMEX Monday morning with Bogler and posted it at 9.01. Here's what you need to know from this report as you walk around the IMEX floor. So it does amazing, amazing encapsulation. Or great, here's my C-Vent report of all the surveys that happened at my event. And I've got all the pie charts and bar graphs doing all that kind of stuff. But what does it mean? So you drop that into 
your, your generative AI and say, make sense of this. What can I do better? How can I improve? What does this information really tell us? And it does a thousand different points looking at it and comes up with some things to think about. So Harvard and Stanford and others have now done all this reviewing and they're seeing that this is boosting productivity 30 to 90%. And I can tell you example after example, we did a, what would normally be a six week long project of creating a destination promo for, for John Hancock life insurance that they normally spend so much time and money and effort and meetings going back and forth. Well, the CEO changed his mind at a meeting and said, we need to do a whole new video and I need it tomorrow. And so that client who had been absolutely hesitant with AI, I said, well, that's completely impossible unless you let the team use AI to do it. And they're like, well, yeah, we're in a pinch, we need to. And sure enough, it was done in 18 hours. So you're smashing, smashing times now, okay? So now I'm gonna share with you about Boggler, which so you know, everyone is going to get a access to this. This is a collaborative AI ecosystem and how it's different than Bard, as we just said, or, or Claude, or GPT or, or whatever it may be, Microsoft Copilot, is that it first allows you to personalize it. So what I mean by that is when I sign on, a whole bucket of knowledge is created for Sam. So all of Sam's interactions are all kind of put in here. So it starts learning Sam. It learns how Sam speaks, it learns how Sam responds, and, and it has that. It's trainable. So I need to create a new proposal for someone or a new description about something else. I can take existing and train it and say, based on what I've done in the past, I need to do one around this or this. So it allows you to personally train it. You're gonna get a professional version. The Teams version, which will be out soon, will allow you to have other members of your team start connecting to the same buckets of knowledge. So you can have a whole marketing bucket, right? You can have a whole legal bucket if you want, or a whole one around events or around activities or whatever it may be. And all of the content and everything that's created is around you and your knowledge and your expertise. Nobody is hiring you because you have the best buses, because you have the biggest shrimp on the buffets. No one's hiring you for that. They're hiring you for your knowledge and your know-how and your experience, okay? So if you're able to take that and train this knowledge base with your information, that's the most valuable thing out there and it's just yours. The other thing on here is it says it's smarter. So there's a bunch of instruction that goes along with whatever you type in that'll give you even better responses than if you went directly to a chat GBT. And when I say directly, the fun thing is you don't have to play that game of what's better today. Is it Copilot with Microsoft or is it Google or is it open? It? Which one is it? And, and they keep going back and forth and change every other day. With Boggler, we connect to all those in the background, but feed it with your information. So you get the best of the biggest, what they call language models out there, but with your information. So very interesting how that works. It's also all purpose. So what I mean by that is there's a, everyone's got to have AI in everything they're doing now. So when you see, like for example, Cvent has AI. Well, it's very specific. They call it narrow AI. So it works within creating a description or this or this or this. You can't take it out and say, hey, create me a PowerPoint or do this or this or this. It's very specific where Boggler is very um, wide open to do all sorts of different tasks from analyzing to summarizing to creative generation across the board. So you can see here, this is what the, the thing will look like on the bottom. You have language, use case, tone, voice. Now this is interesting. It says precise and creative. So how dead on do you want it? Do you want exact information 
or do you want it to have a little bit fun and, and be a little bit more creative? And then in the nerd world, we call that temperature. So we give you control of, of the temperature of the response you're going to get back. Okay. So just to give you an understanding of where we're at and how we can be partners with, with you all as a network is that we look at all of this AI at, in three parts. One is AI fluency. People have to have a basic understanding of what it is and an understanding of how and where it can be applied. And even more importantly, how the brand feels about it and what the brand's going to do with this. Because they're all wondering right now because they have a friend whose cousin's, whose next door's neighbor's uncle got fired because AI took their business, took their job, right? They're, they're all saying that. No one has, but that's what they're all saying and thinking. So they really need to hear from the boss, from the brand, what are we doing? So it is a fantastic time, not just to learn, but for the brand to kind of chest forward and go, this is what we're doing. This is how we're approaching it. And this is how that moves forward. So AI fluency is a big deal. One of those things that we do is exactly this. This is called Quick Start. It's fun and on site. It's really fun on site with all kinds of different things there. We'll set up a boggler bar outside for engagement and experience. That's fluency. The AI solutions, those are the tools. So prompt which you're getting, assist which I'm about to share with you to boggle your mind some more. And then facilitation. This is fascinating. So you now have the knowledge, the know-how, and the confidence to start using AI. You've got a tool or maybe Maybe as a company, you've decided you're using Copilot or whatever it may be, if you're not using Boggler, whatever it may be, you still need to know, how can I take this decades old long process of creating a proposal or designing a program and where and how can I apply AI in that to expedite that, to increase the quality, to increase the effectiveness. So we call that uh, facilitated AI. Quick start you just saw. So how about this? This is an app that you'll, uh, this will be out in a, I think in about a week or so is, is what we've been told. We're waiting for approval on the Apple store. So it captures an interaction. Yes, a business meeting. How about an IMAX when you meet with 15 different people in what, 30 minutes or whatever it is? It captures all of that, but besides just here's what was said, it listens for the tongue. It listens for the emotion. It listens for the pause. Most importantly, it listens for the response. Okay, so when I was sharing this, did it land? Like I told you, I'm doing it for this event right now, so I'm gonna be able to hear what part of this presentation really spoke to you all and what other parts it was just Sam nerding out on something, right? And so when your interaction's done, so yes, it's a business meeting, yes, it's a sales call, Yes, it's a presentation, but how about a doctor's visit? When they're sharing all this information that you may or may not understand and flying over your head, right? How about if you're in school? How about if you've got a coach or a psychologist? Because the fact is the human science behind when we have a conversation or an interaction, I'm totally listening to you and totally present until I figure out where you're kind of going, and then I start thinking about what my response is gonna be. So I miss half the conversation. But assist captures all of it. And then it creates a summary. It creates an executive summary. It creates detailed notes using the Cornell method of, of note taking in science. It creates action items and attributes it to each individual, what the outcome is and what the timeline should be. It creates open thoughts and ideas, so things that had no relevance for our immediate interaction, but were still noteworthy, okay? And then finally, it creates a recap email, which we'll share with you today, uh, of what happened, right? But beyond that, we worked with social communication and creative psychologists and really got down to the crux of what really makes a good connection? How do you know you've really landed a thought or you've, or you've got an endearing quality with the person? How do you know if the meeting is productive? How would you measure that? How do you know if that meeting's actionable? So we took all of that science, turned it into some crazy long algorithm 
and we run it on your interactions. So in real time, you're now seeing what type of impact you made. Did you nail points? Did they understand? Did they believe you? Right? So it's a little awkward at first because when you start using it, people are looking at you like, don't you want to take some notes? And you're like, well, no, I, I mean, I got it, but okay. So just real quick on this, this is Drew Holmgren. He's the chief brand officer for MPI. He was giving some speeches at IBTM and, and a couple other after. We gave him assist. He recorded his presentation. And the minute it's done, he went and looked at his, what we call BAR, the Bogler Assist Rating. And if you look on here, it says, here's what you achieved. Yes, it was collaborative. Yes, it was engaging. It was actionable. There was no conflicts or there were. Your time management was really good. And it measures it from zero to five and it gives you that ranking. It did it too for emotion. Did you connect with the audience? So now that you have this rating, you can then say, if I was giving that presentation again, what should I do better? If I was doing that sales pitch again, what could I do better? If I was looking at my 20 interactions at IMAX, which one is most likely to move? Which ones could care less? So it's capturing and looking at all of this and a thousand different points of focus to give you those answers. Yes. Yes. <clears throat> yes. So when we, when Robbie and I start an interaction, we say, hey, do you guys mind if I boggle this? And, and we just hit the record button. And, the, and so they look at you like, what in the world are you talking about, right? It's like, oh, it's going to summarize our interaction and send us both the notes, right? And you do need to ask and just say, hey, are you guys good with that? But like I, I just did a big one of these that we're doing right now on, on a stage. And I just put this up on the podium. And when I'm live, I'm running through the audience doing all kinds of mess but it could still pick me up. It could still pick up audience reaction, but it's also listening for stuff like, did Sam repeat himself again and again? Because maybe they didn't get it. So besides just, was there a verbal response? It's doing that as well. Does that answer, does that answer your question, Chris? Does that answer it? So it records it. So it records it locally on your device, and then it takes the data and does the summary and sends it back to your device, and it and and the recording is is never saved or or kept. It's only on your device. So so far, once you tell somebody, they're fine. Uh huh. Right, so it's not as rich of an interaction as, as a conversation with somebody because it's one to thousands, right? So it does multiple things. It, the easiest way to, to explain it, it's like having a thousand Sam's standing there and my one job is to, is to listen to people saying, I'm just looking for people to say yes, right? And then another Sam is listening for, 
for Sam, the real Sam, raising his voice or lowering his voice, right? And another one is looking for is Sam repeating himself. And another Sam is looking at the questions that are asked. Because based on the questions, you can see that they completely got it or they didn't get it, right? So you'd like to have a lot deeper, richer information um, from the audience, but it'll glean whatever it can get. But put this in context of how you might use this a little bit differently. Right now, brands are hiring keynote speakers because they're gonna talk about this topic. This is the description and these are the three learning outcomes. Says who? Did they really talk about that? Did they really tell those points? So for MPI WEC, we are running assist on all the major presentations so that they will have qualitative metrics as to, boy, this presenter was dead on. They said exactly what they're gonna do. And when you start tying that to the, the asked for survey and responses, you know, that, that's phenomenal information. All right, so we're kind of, I'll just wrap up here real quick and then we got a little bit of time for, uh, for questions that you may have. So as we leave this, remember that this is a collaborative tool made to boost your creativity, the quality and productivity that you're doing with all of your tasks. I mean, truly, it's for all of your tasks, right? All the traditional common sense, just like when social came along, don't go put spreadsheets in social, don't save, share trade secrets and do all that kind of, just don't do that. We're all, everyone's, every corporation is still trying to figure out what those rules are and they all have different ones. But until that happens, just use your common sense, right? And the best results come from the best info. So what info you drive the AI with, the explanation, the guidance, the direction, is drives everything. And, and so let me give you a pro tip on that. It didn't come with a manual. It would be really hard to come with a manual because it truly can affect everybody in every workspace. So that's a jillion manuals. But in the end, it's its own manual. So when you're sitting down to work on a big task, like we're putting down a curriculum now so we can do 10 courses, you ask the AI, and that's another thing, learn how to, if you don't know how on your computer, to do voice to text so that you can click in the text window, the prompt window, and then just start talking to it. Because when you start talking as opposed to typing, all sorts of different things happen, okay? But ask the AI, whichever you're using, hey, I need to create an event. I need to create a marketing piece. I need to create a business plan. I need to create a social media campaign. What are the questions or things that you need to know from me to make that most effective? Okay, that's a huge, huge piece. You'll be blown away by the direction you'll get from that. And then don't, and don't worry about I mean, it's, it's this whole, do you say please? And are you nice to the AI? Or how, how does that, because you feel guilty, like, eh, hey, that's okay, give me 20 more though. So it's, it, it's you got to enter into those engagements and interactions and just treat it like it's, like it's your six-year-old niece who keeps saying, why, 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 why?
Any other questions? So you guys know when we do this live, we also have all these other workshops that we do around it. We've never performed any of the other workshops because there's normally a jillion questions and how would you's and how could you's just off what we've shared here. So you'll have Robbie and I's emails and we're happy to jump on a Zoom. We're, we love ideating and helping people figure out and understand how to do things whether it's just a quick 10 minute thing or whether you're interested in a, in, in a longer term sort of thing. Do reach out to us and, and do look for us at all the industry events as they come up. No, uh, we are really dangerous in hospitality because we've been here for 30 years. So it's not nerds from the outside saying, here's some tech you really need to try hospitality people. But no, we are doing all kinds of things from, from petroleum to restaurants to, I mean, doctors to, we've been doing a bunch with education um, as of late. Because the need to be able to mobilize your knowledge and your info, that's the game changer. This isn't about the tech, it's about the data and the, and the knowledge in the end. So, I mean, it's just fun sitting down each day with a, how could we use it here? A completely different way of doing that. We're going next week to Hawaii for a big one that's for all these construction people. How can they use AI in their construction? They do massive government contract stuff, but how would that work? So that's going to be fun with a bunch of guys standing around going, we're, we're never going to do any of that kind of stuff, right? But uh, we'll, we'll convert them. We will for sure. And they'll, and they'll all be AI nerds by the time they head home. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so... So that's good fun. So we set up outside the general session and the keynote or the, the workshop, the Boggler Bar experience. So we've got all these really killer vertical kiosks that have Boggler on it. And it is just, it's coffee talk all day long because people come in and one, need a complete understanding or a more of a facilitated, how would I specifically take this and do this? And it's phenomenal. And you know, I'll tell you this too, working with uh, the biggest of travel companies everyone on here knows, they're taking very different paths. And, and here's just a great example of one. We did the national sales convention for one of the biggest, if not the biggest, and instantly uh, they ran out uh, outside one of the sales guys and said, man, how can AI help me? This is a great story. How can AI help me? I normally... Um, I normally, I have this one client, it was a massive client. We do millions of dollars a year for, it's amazing, I love them. And every year, about this time, we always get hit up with, boy, I should introduce you to this other division. And we just have um, all these niceties in a Zoom, or maybe we meet in person and handshakes, and this is great, we should work together, but nothing ever happens. How can AI help me, right? So I said, bet, this is really fun. Come on over. Let's look at that. So we sat there with Bogler and I asked that guy, what is your favorite business book? Who's your favorite author? What are your favorite tactics that you like? And so he started thinking and I was like, okay, now tell Bogler what your situation is. So he said, well, and he basically just repeated it because I put it on microphone and he talked and all the text went in there. And I said, okay, the book that you should read is Never Split the Difference. It's by the world's best hostage negotiator. So he knows how to get into people's heads and, and think right and do all that stuff. I said, based on what this guy has just said and based on the book, because I'm directing my AI now, right? Using the tactics from this book, how can he remedy this situation and go from niceties to a real proposal and action? So everyone's like, what's this idiot talking about? There's no way this computer's gonna do all that. And sure enough, we hit go and it said, well, here's the specific question word for word that you should ask. And when you get that answer, here's how you should respond to that. 
And this is based on the so-and-so, so-and-so theory that has worked and worked for this and this and this. Try that. So three days later, he had that call. He used this information and he got that business after 10 years. So every day it's a different use, but you just have to consider it as your mentor, as somebody who's next to you who can help you out that has not just uh, a little closed knowledge, but has the entire world of all the biggest successes to help you. That's our time, guys. I'm, I'm free to stay, stay on and talk as long as anyone would like, but I know some of you have to run, and, and thank you for coming. We look forward to seeing you soon, and, and we look forward to hearing about your, your victories with AI very soon. Thanks, everyone.